Hey everyone, welcome to the pre-algebra video for 3.3. We're solving equations that have variables on both sides, okay? So both sides of what? Well, both sides of the equal sign. All right, so let's just do this first one. Let's do 7n minus 5 equals 10n plus 13, all right? So now let's think about it. What is the goal of solving equations always? Well, it's always to get the variable by itself equal to some number. Okay, so what's our variable in this case? It's n. So I want this to end up looking like n equals some number. All right, so we're going to figure out what that some number is. Now, how do I do that? The issue here that we have today that we haven't faced yet is that I have variables on both sides. So I need to get the variables on one side. And generally, what I want to do, and it doesn't matter, you can do it two ways, but what I always say is I want to get um, a positive um, variable term, okay? I would rather have 2n than negative 2n. I'd rather have 4m than negative 4m, okay? So how do I do that? Well, here's a 7n and a 10n. Got to get rid of one of them, okay? And if I get rid of it, that means I'm going to subtract it from both sides. Now, if I subtract 10n from this side, I would get 0. 10n minus 10n would be 0. If I subtract it from this side, I get 7n minus 10n would be negative 3n. And it's not wrong. It's okay. But here's what I think we should do instead. Let's take this 7n and let's subtract it from that side and from this side. Now, why am I doing that? Again, trying to get the variable by itself, and this is just one step towards doing that. It helps me because 7n minus 7n, those cancel, leaving me with negative 5 equals, what's 10n minus 7n? It's 3n plus 13. And now we just have a two-step equation, right? Because I have a plus 13 i got to get rid of, and then I have a times 3 that I have to get rid of. Let's get rid of the plus 13 by subtracting 13 from both sides. Negative 5 minus 13, that's like taking uh, the positive versions of those, adding them. 5 and 13 would be 18, and then giving it a negative sign. So we get negative 18 equals 3n, and those have canceled. What's our last step here? Divide by 3, divide by 3, you get n to equal n equals negative 6, and I can re... Uh, so technically this is negative 6 equals n, but I can rewrite it as n equals negative 6. It's always preferred to have the variable first, but it's not wrong the other way. And there you go. So that's how you solve an equation when you have variables that start out on both sides. And of course I forgot this is problem number 1. This would be problem number 2. And problem number 2 is one I want you to try on your own. I want you to take 8y plus 4 equals 11y minus 17. And I want you to solve that for the variable y. Pause the video, try that, see what you get, play it when you're done, and we'll keep on moving. All right, so we have variables on both sides of the equations. That is not good. It's not the end of the world. We just know that we want to solve for the equation and get the variable by itself on one side of the equation equal to some number. So I'm going to subtract... 8y from both sides. Now, could I subtract 11y? Absolutely. And after I do this, I'm going to do it the other way. Okay. So just bear with me for a sec. So here, those cancel or become 0 because 8y minus 8y is 0. And I get 4 equals 11y minus 8y, uh, 11 yo-yos minus 8 yo-yos, 3 yo-yos minus 17. Again, goal is to get the variable by itself, and I'm going to deal with adding and subtracting constant terms, such as 17, first. How do I get rid of a minus 17? Well, I want to add 17 to it. So going from left to right, 4 plus 17 gets you 21. That equals 3y, and then minus 17 plus 17 cancels, or becomes 0. Lastly, we want to divide by 3, and divide by 3 those cancel, you're left with y equals, or um, 7 equals y, otherwise known as y equals 7. So there's your answer, but let's do it in the other way. I'm going to rewrite 
8y plus 4 equals 11y minus 17. What if I wanted to, instead of subtracting 8y from both sides, let's subtract 11y from both sides. Let's see what happens. All right, so 8y minus 11y. Well, 8 minus 11 is negative 3, and we're talking about y's. I'm going to add 4 equals 11y minus 11y. Anything minus itself is 0. So we are left with an equals negative 17. All right, <clears throat> now I've got to deal with the addition and subtraction of constant terms first. So let's subtract the 4 in order to get rid of that plus 4. But i got to do the same to the other side, the golden rule there of solving equations. So I get negative 3y plus 4 minus 4 cancels equals negative 17 minus 4. Well, that's like taking 17 plus 4, which is 21, and making it negative. It's negative 21. Or if you want to look, think of it as a number line, here's negative 17. You're subtracting 4 from it. 1, 2, 3, 4, so that'd be negative 18, negative 19, negative 20, negative 21, either way you want to do it. All right, lastly, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, you get those cancel, or they could both become 1, which would be 1y over 1, which is just the same as saying y. That equals negative 21 divided by negative 3, negative divided by negative is a positive, and what is it? Positive. 7. And if you notice, it doesn't matter which way you do it. If you subtract the 8y first or the 11y, you get the same answer. And both ways are totally okay with me. And they're both equally correct. So there you go. Alright, so now we're going to talk about equations that have no solution. What does that mean? Well, we're going to find out. Okay, so if I said solve this equation right here, what would be your first uh, instinct? But hopefully now you realize here's some parentheses, and we pretend parentheses are like prisons, and the things inside are innocent, so we want to break them out. How do we break them out? Distributive property, multiplication, right? So we distribute the 5 to the 2x. So that's like saying 5 times 2x, which is 10x, and then 5 times 1, positive 1, which gets you positive 5. And that equals 10x. And now what you see is we have variables on both sides, and we know how to deal with that, right? I want to get the variables on one side of the equation. So should I subtract 10x from this side or this side? Well, it actually doesn't matter. Let's subtract 10x from this side, the left side. So subtract 10x, subtract 10x. You're left with, well, 10x minus 10x is 0, or I could just cancel it out either way, plus 5 equals 10x minus 10x is 0. Okay, so 0 plus 5, that's just like saying 5 equals 0? How can that be? Well, the answer is it can't be. Or the answer is, hey, it doesn't work. There is no solution. Okay, so when you get this and your variables have disappeared, leaving you with just constant terms, and you get some number equal to a different number, what you say is no solution. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's look at this. What that means is there is no number that I could plug in here for x that would give me a true statement, such as this. Let's plug in, um, let's pretend yeah, x equals 5. And I'm going to plug that 5 into the original equation everywhere I see x. So I had 5 times 2x plus 1 equals 10x. And I'm going to plug the 5 in there, and I'm going to plug the 5 in there. Okay, so I rewrite this as 5 parentheses 2 times 5 plus 1 equals 10 times 5. All right, so order of operations, let's work on the left side first. I have to do what's inside the parentheses first, and I have multiplication and addition, so I need to do the multiplication first. 5, parentheses, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1, equals, on this side, I can do 10 times 5, which is 50. All right, let's reevaluate. Parentheses still, got to do what's inside them. So that means taking 5 times 10 plus 1 is 11, and saying, okay, does that equal 50? And I'm checking, so I should write question marks, checking if it's equal. All right, 5 parentheses 11 means 5 times 11. 5 times 11 is 55. 
And does that equal 50? Uh, not last time I checked. So, and. So it didn't work. It didn't give us a true statement. In fact, when I plugged in phi, they gave us a false statement. And when you get something that is no solution, what it means is there is not a single number. I don't care if you plug in a 5 for x like we did. I don't care if you plug in a negative 3 for x like we did. There's no number out there that you could plug in that would get you a true statement. You're going to keep getting things like this, false statements, right? All right, the next thing we need to talk about is when you get all real numbers as your solution. So what does that mean? Well, let's take this for example. If I said uh, x equals x, that would be an equation, right? Yeah, because there's an equal sign. And what it means is that anything I plug in for x, it's going to give me a true statement, right? So let's pretend x equals 2. So if I plug in a 2 there for that x and for this x, I could rewrite that as 2 equals 2, which would be correct, right? If x was equal to negative 5, I plug in a 5 there, I would get x equals x would become negative 5 equals negative 5. And it'd be true, okay? So let's just make it a little more complicated, um, but I can handle it. We're going to do 6x plus 2 equals 2 times 3x plus 1. And let's solve this and see what happens. Well, uh, these are not like terms. I can't combine them, but let's look over here. Ah, parentheses, they're like prisons. Got to break things out. How do I break them out? Distributive property. 2 times 3x, got to multiply it by that entire term, is going to equal 6x. 2 times positive 1 gets you 2. So now you have 6x plus 2 equals 6x plus 2. Pause. What do we notice? Both sides are the exact same. 6x plus 2 equals 6x plus 2. When you get to this point and both sides of the equation are equal, what it means is that you have found an equation that has all real numbers as the solution. So what does that mean, though? Well, what it means is I could put any number in, back into this original and get a true statement. Okay, so let's rewrite the original. We said it was 6x plus 2 equals 2 times 3x plus 1. So I'm going to plug in a 0. I'm going to make x equal to 0 now. And I'm going to plug that 0 in there for x there and for x there. Okay? So what do we get? Well, that's like saying 6 times 0 plus 2 equals 2 times 3 times, that should technically be a bracket because now I'm doing parentheses 0, doesn't matter how you do it, plus 1, and parentheses and bracket. Okay, 6 times 0 here is 0 plus 2 equals 2 bracket in parentheses. Now I have um, 3 times 0. Okay, 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1. I can just do brackets now. Uh, zero, time, uh, 0 plus 2 is just 2. And that equals, well, let's see, you've got to do what's inside the brackets first. 0 plus 1 is 1. So it's like saying 2 times or bracket, I shouldn't use the brackets appropriately, 2 times 1. Okay, brackets, parentheses mean the same thing. So 2 equals, 2 times 1 is 2. So what kind of statement did we get here? A true statement. So what I want you to do is I want you to rewrite the original yourself here. 6x plus 2 equals 2 times 3x plus 1. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to plug in a 2 for x, and then solve that down and see if you get a true statement or not. All right, so if you do that and you plug in a 2 for both of the x's, you'll get 6 times 2 plus 2 equals 2 times, and I'm just going to use a multiplication sign, 3 times 2 plus 1. There, that's a little simpler, huh? 6 times 2 is 12 plus 2 equals 2 times Order of operations, got to do 3 times 2 first, that gets you 6 plus 1. 12 plus 2 is 14, and that equals 2 times oops, 2 times 6 plus 1 is 7. Lastly, we just multiply. 14 equals 2 times 7, which is 14. Now you got a, another true statement. So what does that mean? 
Well, again, when you get a true statement, it means, let's go back here, let's look at our equation. It means that any number that you plug in here for x is going to get you a true statement, which means the solution is not x equals 2, it's not x equals 14, it's not x equals 0, it's all real numbers. Any number you plug in for x is going to get you a true statement, so we just say, instead of listing all real numbers, which would be impossible, it would take you, well, forever, you would never stop, we say all real numbers. All right, that's all I have for you guys. I look forward to seeing you in class.